vision. Hey everyone, Dave here. And so far, most of these obsessions have been things that I really love. But sometimes, for me, an obsession isn't so much a great thing I adore, and more of a baffling curiosity that just raises so many questions. Questions about why it is and how it came to be that I just have to keep on digging, digging for answers that I may never find. Sometimes my obsession is more of a perplexed curiosity, and that's certainly the case with today's installment. Right now, I am fascinated by Free Willy, the animated series. Dave's Obsession! Dave's Obsession of the Moment! We all vaguely remember the live-action movie Free Willy, right? Kid befriends a whale, wants to set the whale free, there's a wise older Native American mentor. This shot happens somewhere. Fairly standard animal-centric kids' fare. Not really the sort of thing you'd expect to make a regular series out of. But this was Warner Brothers in the 90s. If kids might recognize it, let's figure out a way to animate it. Well, technically, Warner outsourced this show to Nelvana, so get ready for some Canadian animation. But Willie and I will be on time tomorrow. Sorry I'm so late. You have a chill out, Marlene. As is par for the course, none of the original cast members returned for the show. Even though the guy who played Randolph in the movie had previously done voice work for Nelvana's Tintin series. But I guess the screen presence just made him too expensive. That, or nobody cared enough to remember who was actually in the movie. Wait, Michael Madsen was in the movie? This was just the movie of a thousand Michaels. None of whom are involved in the show. Even though I never had a particular affinity for the film, I watched this show religiously as a kid because... It was on ABC, which was one of the very few channels we could get clearly with our old TV antenna. Then I completely forgot about it for years until I was an adult, when one morning out of the blue I woke up and suddenly remembered just how bizarre this show was. It all started coming back to me, hazily, like a fever dream from long ago. I started wondering how someone who was a big fan of the movie would react to the show. Hell, how would they react to the theme song? Yay, there's Willy! And I guess that's Jesse, since he's blonde. They're swimming together, that's pretty cool! This isn't the Michael Jackson song for the movie, but it's the- wait, submarine? What's going on here? Looks like they're being chased by- what the hell?! Is- is a cyborg firing a missile at Jesse and Willie? Did, did that just happen? They all seem pretty calm and happy now. Is nobody concerned that a cyborg just tried to murder a child? Nobody at all? You're just gonna repeat your waving animation? Is- they're just gonna pretend it didn't- why is Jesse so happy? That cyborg must still be nearby. What is happening? You're just gonna do your jumping trick? Is, is he trying to escape the cyborg? Or you're just smiling and goofing off and not at all concerned about the cyborg in the submarine? A drawing just faded into a slightly different drawing and that's not the weird thing here. Let's go into the show itself. Remember that sad goodbye between Jesse and Willie at the end of the film? Did you tear up knowing that these two kindred souls may have to learn to live without each other? Yeah, they just hang out all the time now. And there's no sign of that family Willie was so desperate to reunite with. Ah, uh, this is just the way we like it, huh, Willie? Randolph got Jesse a job at the Institute he works at now because for some reason he parted ways with the aquarium he stole a whale from. The show kind of ignores Jesse's past as a criminal troublemaker, instead making him a more innocent rascal who scares the sh** out of injured animals with his killer whale. Jesse's foster parents show up sometimes, but most of the focus is on new characters, such as Institute co-worker Marlene, who starts off as a stick in the mud but softens up soon, and then her entire personality consists of caring about the environment. I'm working here because I want to make a difference. The ocean is a mess, Jesse. That does not make her unique in this cast. Then there's Mr. Noggle, the slightly bumbling head of the Institute. He's the resident old fuddy-duddy. Jesse, we cannot afford to feed Tyrannosaurus Whale here. And then there's a sea lion named Lucille, because of course her name is Lucille, and a dolphin named Einstein. Oh, yeah, and then the evil cyborg! His name is The Machine, because creativity is for other cartoons. And he's the platonic ideal of a kid's show villain. But we must all work together to keep environmental criminals from spoiling nature's gifts to us. Work together. I hate it when people do that. He wants to kill Willie because Willie took his arm. Yes, our lovable, adorable animal hero bit off a dude's arm. 
Granted, that dude was a greedy villain who spent his time polluting the ocean, and now he pollutes the ocean and hunts the whale. If that rotten whale shows up, I'll take care of him too. I owe that bucket of blubber for what he did to me. He's if Captain Ahab was a Captain Planet villain. He's so committed to pollution that he made henchmen out of pollution. He also sometimes wears an apparently very convincing person mask to pose as environmentalist philanthropist Rockland Stone. Which is weird because with a name like that, shouldn't he have become a rock-themed villain instead of a mechanical pollution villain? And why go out of your way to pretend to fight pollution as your cover for spreading pollution? And he wears a person mask and nobody notices that he's wearing a mask! This isn't even like Clark Kent's glasses, he's wearing a face that's not real skin! Unless it is real skin, in which case, gross. But what's really amazing is that when I was a kid, none of this seemed insane to me. I was just like, oh cool, Free Willy's on! Let's watch a cartoon about a kid and his whale being hunted by a cyborg and his sidekicks made out of slime. Oh, but the weirdness isn't over. Midway through the first episode, Lucille's been injured by the machine, Jesse and Willy find her, and then... Take her to Randolph! Take her to Marlene! Huh? Willy? Really? This is a talking animal show now. Whoa! Did you just... speak to me? I always speak to you, but for the first time we understand each other. I mean, the movie required some suspension of disbelief to assume that a kid and a whale would bond so well, and it certainly had elements of some sort of mysticism and spirituality, but it was still for the most part grounded in something resembling reality. Let's take this quiet, scientifically almost plausible story about an animal lover and throw in both science fiction and magic. I think you are a truth talker. A truth talker? What's a truth talker? Special kids who can communicate with animals. Oh, that explains everything, I guess? Special? I'm just a troublemaker, Randolph, you know that. How many kids could make friends with a killer whale? Okay, truth talker. We're just rolling with it. To get in touch with your power, Jesse, you must be calm. Breathe slowly. Focus your energy. Stay calm. Breathe and focus. Stay calm. Breathe and focus. Yeah, because he was clearly so calm and focused when this first happened, when he was panicking over Lucille's life. So yeah, this series is about Jesse talking to animals and saving the ocean from an evil cyborg. Totally the same thing as a movie about a cynical orphan bonding with an animal and learning to love and accept people. While the show basically continues the general pro-animal theme of its source material, it chooses to completely abandon the tone of its source material, throwing every marketable cartoon cliché at the wall, blending it all with the lack of subtlety usually associated with environmentally conscious children's programming. And yes, I get the importance of educating children about protecting our planet, but it's really hard to do it in a way the kids will understand and take to heart. This show seemed to try way too hard to appeal to kids, and yes, there was a stretch where, as a dumb kid, it did appeal to me. But it didn't help me take the environment seriously. Because when nothing else in the show seemed real, why would the actual real-life threat seem real? In the end, we get this bizarre mess of a show that feels like it has a few good intentions sprinkled amidst its cynical cash-grabbiness. And if you're a fan of bizarre marketing decisions and misguided kids shows, you should definitely check this one out. Surprisingly enough, Warner Brothers hasn't completely disowned the show, and the first season is available on Amazon Instant. So, that was a show I watched as a child. Regularly. Without even questioning it. What was wrong with me? Do you have any shows like that? Shows you vaguely remember seeing as a child, and you didn't question them at the time, but now you just can't believe they were real? Discuss that in the comments, why don't you? And until next time, this is Dave, signing off.